Are we up? We're up. Testing one, two, yes. <laughs> I still can't have giggles. Same name, same time, same station. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Sunday morning here in Tokyo. Peaceful, peaceful. It looks like a nice day. Not too hot, maybe. I don't know. I haven't been outside yet. Same old, same old. <laughs> Story of my life. I didn't get the original. I seem to have missed my reference copy. Where is it? Hang on. I need my master copy, my master reference. Times are there for me. It's eight o'clock. I start the streams every morning at eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. How was our first weekend day at the new shop? <laughs> our life changed yesterday. Whatever my life has changed yesterday. Incredible. We had an incredible day. Whatever we knew, things were going to change when we opened the shop. They changed yesterday. I don't know what happened was we had a, a fairly well. It was a busy day. It goes without saying, it was a busy day. In the past couple of years for us, weekends have been nothing special because we found an interesting thing that when we were up on the second floor, when there's nobody walking out the street, nobody comes upstairs. When there's a moderate number of people walking out on the street, moderately busy, people look around, look around. Some percent of them see saw the stairway and came upstairs. On weekends, up to now for the past four years, when it's been so crowded, people walk, they bump into each other, they walk like that, when it's so crowded, nobody can see our door and stairways because the street was just literally too busy. So for us, weekends has not been any specifically busy time. We may have had more or less party reservations. That's nothing to do with what day of the week it is because people on vacation, the day of the week is irrelevant to them. So weekends have just been pretty much a normal day. When you look at our, our sales graphs and stuff like that, there's no weekday, weekend. It doesn't, it's never worked like that. Yesterday was, of course, different. It was a fairly moderately busy day in Asakusa, and everybody who walks down the street can see our doorway. And it's plus minus. If we got to the middle of the afternoon, we were looking at ourselves and thinking, this might have been a real big mistake, because what we found was Tons of families came in, people pushing stro strollers and stuff like that. They saw the sign for the print party. And we found ourselves buried in kids yesterday afternoon. And uh, as it happened, we didn't have a reservation in the one o'clock spot and the 2.30 spot. People came in and said, can we do a print party? Kawaii-san said, sure. And he ends up doing it in the back with six kids. And we do not want to do this. And these were kids. These were like little elementary school kids. And once that started, the next people saw that happening and it started like a chain smoking deal. One after the other, after the other, after the other. So I was at the front counter. I eventually started telling people, sorry, no, we're sold out. It's booked for the rest of the day. This wasn't true, but I just did not want to sit here dealing with strollers and little kids all day long. So we are going to have to prepare a sign and a poster right near the front door that we do have print parties, we do have a sooty tie and we're going to have to set an age up. And why should we do on the website? It says from 10 and up. But these people yesterday with their strollers and little kids didn't see or didn't know or couldn't tell them. And once we got going, we couldn't, you know, once some kids are doing it, we can't tell the next kids no. So we're going to have to clearly, absolutely set it. This is not a children's activity. Adults can do it with children, but not just for kids. Otherwise, it just becomes a kindergarten here. So we got in a bit of trouble in the afternoon because of that. But after I shut it down and stopped the reservations, it quieted out and became back to a normal shop. So that's one thing that's going to have to change. The next thing, I should actually do some work here, right? I'm not here to tell stories, I'm here to work. I don't know. 
The other thing that changed, of course, because of the extra volume of normal people coming in, the register was good, we had tons of chance to talk to people. Took a million selfies and photos with people. And I sit here at this bench, I've got a stool placed right in front of my carving bench, and people who want to take pictures, I sit at my bench, they sit on the stool, the lantern in the back, and get a nice picture together, and bing, 10 minutes later it's on Instagram or something, I don't know. But the other big, big, big change, you know, I sort of teased and talked about this a while ago that, that one thing we have to start doing is running evening things here. When tourists come to Tokyo, basically there's nothing to do at night except drink. There's bars everywhere, of course. There's nothing to do. There's very few clubs, interesting places to go and see things to do. Museums and shops and stuff shop, bang, 536 gone. And we hear this time and time and time again. What can I do in the evening? Last night, I stayed open. The kids, the staff, Kawaii-san, uh, poisoned me some went home at 5.30 and 6. And I thought, you know, what the hell, whatever, it's a nice evening, I'll just sit here, carve, I'll just keep the lights open while people walk by. I had to shut it down about 10 o'clock because I was just desperately hungry and tired. I had to say to the people, I'm sorry, gang, I'm sorry, people, I know I've got to close this, I've got to, to get out of here. It was that crowded. Once it gets dark outside, the room is lit up. It looks like a freaking Apple store. Every single person going down the street came in. The register exploded. I should have had some pictures. I just couldn't. I was here by myself, running back and forth. And clearly now the challenge for us now is to try and find staff to be able to do this. Because we've built this place. It's here. It's a freaking magnet for people. But I cannot do this by myself, obviously. I did it yesterday, but I cannot do this by myself. So. It was incredible. Absolutely incredible. It was a ton of fun. I'm not trying to say that it was something awful last night. It was a ton of fun. Talking to people, chatting with people. A lot of these people who come in like this, just out of the blue, because they've been walking down the street and saw the lights, they've never seen our stuff before. They've never seen heroes. They don't know anything. You know, there are people out in the world who've never seen it with your heroes. So it's just a whole different kind of fun, introducing our work and explaining our work and showing our work to people who have never seen it before. It's a different, a totally different class of people, class, not, not, I forgot, slow class, but a totally different, di different genre of people. And it was a ton of fun, and literally I had to sort of clap my hand and say, I'm sorry people, but it's really kind of getting late, and I had to get out of here at that point. Whatever, a couple of people brought their prints to the cash register, we closed it up, but I had to get out of here. So now, I know Kawaii-san and I have been sort of chatting about this semi, not, not really seriously, about running an evening business, doing print parties, plus other stuff. We're right next to the famous Hokbi Dori which is huge, one of Tokyo's most famous bar streets. But it's a friendly bar street. It's not like Kabukicho, which is sleaze and prostitutes and gangsters and drugs and all that kind of crap. This is Hopi Dori. It's a family-friendly bar district. So the idea, I guess, is this. Run an evening print party session, say, at 6 o'clock or maybe 6.30 or something. People come to it before they have dinner. They book this session. We got to do with a group, three, four, five people, whatever. We do the print party at six for an hour, whatever. We do their shopping, get out of here seven thirty, and we have reserved for them a table around the corner in Hopi Door. Our staff takes them over there, introduces them to the bar staff over there, and we do a handoff. And we've prepared maybe a menu together. The place over there has an English menu or something like this. We've all arranged this. So that it's a, a foreigner-friendly place in the middle of that bar street. There it is. They're set up to go, and we hand off to, to the bar people. And I'm like, I'm talking to Carson. Do you want to do this? And you go over there, and you can sit with the people. You, you do the print party first for an hour, then you go and sit with them and drink together. It's just like, like six days a week, I'm going to go and drink. <laughs> and obviously, we couldn't do it at that level. But uh, So something like that. I think if we were able to offer that kind of package, Eve, asak, evening asaksa, you know, 
Or we could even make it a day thing. Yoshimi-san has that fabulous, fabulous cooking class down the street here, you know. Cooking class at 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Well, no, it doesn't make sense because you got to eat it. Cooking class in the morning. Start at 10, you go to Yoshimi's place in the morning. Do a cooking class at 10 o'clock for two hours. You eat it there. That's her, her current plan. The class is 10 to 12, you eat your lunch, away you go. Then out you go. You go to San Soji, you've got your hour and a half or a couple of hours of free time in the afternoon. We could maybe tie up with the drum museum. People go and do the drum lesson and stuff like that. They come here at 6 o'clock to print party, go over to Hopi Dori for dinner. We could really do a, a day in a Saksa thing. Who wouldn't want to come and do that? I'm ignoring the chat. Hey, sorry about this, guys. I'm ignoring the chat. Look at this already. God, I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm talking too much. I'm not listening. Sorry. Paper model print exhibition on Fuji Arts. I haven't seen that, but there was it was a big genre in the Meiji era. People would published wood but no when I was a kid we bought pop, pop and fold you get a little book full of cardboard stuff you popped them up and folded them up and made models and stuff out of them it was a thing in the Meiji era here there would bought prints the family the, the mother would buy it take it home to the kid the kid gets scissors and glue and paste and makes little models kabuki actors and stuff like that it was a real big deal there's very few left because of course most of them get chopped up Oh, questions, questions, questions. Blah, 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 blah. Moko Hong Kong after dark. I look like I've been up all night studying. But studying is not what I've been up doing, but whatever. Yeah, we've created a monster. We have. We've absolutely created a monster. Do we have enough revenue now to hire more staff? I know it is working. You know, we, we've what we've done is before we opened down here, I put two staff on duty every day, and since we opened, I've put three every day on. So, yes, my costs are increasing, increasing. We're selling more. You know, it's actually probably growing in an organic way. So, yes, we desperately need more staff. And if we can see more people right now, I mean, quote, I'm hiring right now, of course, I'm hiring. But we can't just, you know, it's not like the coffee shop across the street. They're hiring too. But if you want to go work at the coffee shop, you can start today. You know what to do. You know how to, you know, you know how to pick up the glasses on the table and go for it. Not just everybody can work for starting today. Customers ask, what's this print about? What's going on? You've got to have knowledge of this stuff. And for the print body staff, my God, it's just it's not so simple. You've got to have knowledge of the prints. You've got to be able to print at a rudimentary level. You've got to be able to speak English, and you've got to have a personality that can say to people, hey, come on in, let's get started. And very, very few people are, are like that. So my number one, up to number one problem, that's been away for a long time, is staff, people to print, people to deal with the customers. Sensitive to the seasonal tour swings, yeah, well, yes, of course. I know we know the Asakusa shop is part of the tourist business. We know, and for the four years we've been here, the cash register shows spring down, autumn down, spring. You know, it shows the balance of the year. We know that, and our staff know that they 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 do more days in spring and more days in the autumn. So, so that's not going to change anything. You know? We always have tons of work to do. If there's not people coming in the door, we have lots and lots and lots of work to do all the time. My own camera, it's okay. And still, the lighting is no good, eh? Because I haven't got my bulb set up here, so I keep talking about that. But uh, I wonder why I haven't been able to get it done. But that was insane last night. I, I, I tried, I didn't have a chance to take a picture. I wanted to go back to one end of the room and get my camera. Maybe at one time, I don't know, there's 10 or 12 people or somebody in there. I don't know who wants. And it was funny, there was a lot of people coming in and just looking and going out. You know, not everybody that comes in is a customer, of course. This is the way you have a shop, you know, people browse. 
It's okay, that's what we need, traffic. <laughs> the stamps, man. Of course, that's on purpose. We we try and do that. It's an extra value, you know. The staff spends a lot of time on those stamp issues. You know what they do? They try and make sure that the same person doesn't get too many of the same postage stamps repeated all the time. They keep folders of them that are marked for each month that stuff is going out. So if if you get repeated postage stamps, it means they've screwed up a little bit. It's a real, we think it's a real chomp point, or an extra point for our subscriptions. People actually build up a little Japanese stamp collection. And we're really careful what we choose. You know, the post office here, the same with any post office all over the world, I think the Americans started doing it first. Post, postage stamps used to be nicely engraved, like miniature woodblock prints, all of, them, of course. You know. Then in recent years, they've just become stickers. Just, you know, just peel and stick, peel and stick. And the Japan Post Office has those too, but I've told my girls, never, ever, ever buy those. We want real postage stamps, no stickers, no seals. And nothing, there's a bunch of like character stuff, kitty chan stickers and stuff like this. I've told them, no, no Snoopy, no kitty chan, no nothing. I want real postage stamps of the attractive you know, type. They think I'm too strict, but whatever. I'm still a boss here, so. Have you had a photograph or something you could show us with a box of this stuff? This is really no good, you know, I'm flying blind here. 
It's okay for seaweed, but it's not okay for anything else. Kantar is like a Turing tester. Is it a robot? Is it a human being? Who knows? When we started doing that postage stamp thing a while back, and I, I, I made a photograph of a, a sample envelope and put it on the website for subscriptions. I guess it's still there, like showing that what you will get when you get a subscription from us, how the prints are packaged and stuff like that. It's part of the website. And uh, I think I put it up a, whatever, a couple of days or something. And somebody wrote, and uh, I think this, the example stamps I used were Dragon Ball or something. That was what the post office published just at that time. So. So people started requesting, can I get Dragon Ball stamps next week? Can I get Doraemon stamps, please, whatever. I had to tell people, I'm sorry, we cannot take requests for certain types of postage stamps, just, just whatever, you get what you get. We just buy them from the post office. The girls, you know, over and over, try and keep a good selection of them on hand, but we can't take orders for specific postage stamps. It's just beyond that. You get what you get, you know. Zoom in a bit more, would help. I don't know. I've really got to get the light fixed up here. Yeah. There's always something wrong with this stream technically.
Oh, we've got a picture here. Good, good, good. Can I get a sneak a chance to go and see this? No way! <laughs> no way! How many of our prints do you have? What? This is from, give me a hint here, this is some subscription prints, is it? <laughs> no way! My God, you've been paying my rent for a year, years, obviously. <laughs> Can we use that picture, maybe, on the subscription page? Make a deal with your father-in-law. He can have the stamps like you posted just now. <laughs> no way. Look at that. It's an example of what happens, you know, when you just just keep going, keep going, keep going. It's, it's the same as what we do here, you know. If you start, when I started the 100 Poets series, it was just, I can't do this. It's going to be 100 prints. What am I doing? I can't do this. But you just start walking. It's that old phrase, what is it? One step. Just take it one step at a time. You take a step, and you take another step, and you drink some tea, and you take another step. And then life goes on. After a while, you look behind you, and you see a photograph like that. Holy shit, look what I did. You know. The prince, nice film. Hopefully, thank you very much for the support. You know, that's really, really appreciated. You know. Very much. You know. Crazy people to make them, crazy people to collect them. You know. A journey of a thousand steps. <laughs> Incredible. So how many of my dinners have you paid for? <laughs> yeah, amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. <laughs> I'm really happy I started that policy, you know, of using stamps. It was a mistake, not a mistake, it was a, whatever, just a happenstance. I don't even know how long it was ago. No idea. When the heroes came up or whatever, the girls and all they were, we were usually just taking this packages to the post office, paying cash at the window, and the woman put the postage machine bang, bang, bang. And one day, something was wrong there. Either their machine wasn't working or whatever, and the woman at the counter said, oh my God, I can't do that. Is it okay if we put stamps on this time around? Whatever. And my, my girl, the clerk, who had been taking the post, just said, yeah, whatever, I guess it's okay, sure. Check with David, is it okay? Can we put stamps on? I said, yeah, whatever, just blow the packages out, get them out. And from two or three or four or five of the subscribers that month came the message back, wow, thanks very much, that's so cool to put stamps on. So we looked at each other and thought, oh, 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 this looks like a thing. So that's right, I just made a policy right there, bang, ladies, please, get your cash in advance, go to the post office, check what, you know, uh, what they call kinen kites, so commemorative stamps, see what's available, get a drawer ready, and from now on, use commemorative stamps for all the subscription prints. And they misunderstood what I said, they thought, actually, I had said, use stamps on every single package that ever leaves the building from now on. So they've been using stamps, just not just for subscription prints, but for regular 
regular packages as well. And sometimes it's a bit funny, you know, when somebody buys a, a great wave or something, it's a big package like this, and if they ask for EMS Express shipping, it's something like 2,500 yen or something, whatever it is. And there's not too many large value stamps published in the Japanese post office, because most people don't do this. They just bang it with the machine for the big ones. So every now and then, someone will get a package, like a great wave package, it's a big package, and there's like 25 stamps on it, because the girls have taken me at my word literally not to use the machines. So they will put 82 yen stamps, like 15 if more in a row. <laughs> and there is a downside to it. There is a downside to it. Um, I have to be careful what I say because somebody might get upset by what I say, but it's a true story. And uh, if you get upset, I can't help that. There are certain countries out there that we have learned now that it is better not to use pretty Japanese postage stamps. I mean, the kind of country where stuff, we ship it, it goes over by the airplane, it goes into the post office at that end, and it doesn't get to the people. And the tracking numbers show, tracking onto the plane, tracking across the Pacific, tracking into the country, blank. And the more attractive and interesting the package is, the more chance it is of disappearing. And there's country, this country, and this country, and this country, three countries we have learned. Try to make the packages look as boring as possible. Don't put on the outside what's in them. Don't use postage stamps. Just make them a generic brown package. And they have a chance of getting through. There's one country that we used to have a problem with, but we've learned how to solve it. And actually, we may start using that solution to, to different countries. I'm going to talk about this one, I think. So, the Philippines used to be a problem. We had a couple of regular subscribers in the Philippines, and it wasn't that every package went missing. It was that they would never get a full set of prints. Out of the subscription set, maybe a third, quite a lot, really, a third every two or three months, they'd write to us again, Dave, I'm sorry, it's, it's happened again. The print didn't arrive. It's three months behind. What should we do? The Philippines was really, really chronic. And one day, one of the subscribers in the Philippines there, instead of giving up, and instead of paying for extra prints and stuff, they said, Dave, I've got an idea, please do this. And what they did was, they checked with their local bank if it would be okay to do this. And then the bank said, well, okay, whatever, let's try it. And they told me, please send to person's name, Mr. John Doe, care of a bank of whatever it was, the local bank of blah, 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 then the bank's address in the Philippines. It was just down the street from them. Instead of sending to his apartment, sent to the bank at the street corner with his name on it. He teed it up with the bank first. Every single one went through. And he said, that's it. You know, people in the post office who are stealing stuff, they will steal from, you know, whatever. But if it looks like it's something official, something that might catch notice, or some people might chase you, they will just let that one go straight through. So any package that was directed to his local bank went right through. So we've kept that idea in mind now for countries where we are having trouble, we, or where we don't no longer take orders from, we will, we'll give that a try. We'll say, hey, look, try this. We can't send to a personal address in your country, but if you can arrange for a commercial address, a bank or a famous company or something that looks like it might be a hot thing, do not dare touch this package, then we think we may be able to fly it.
Was the flea market a better success yesterday? You mean in terms of percentages? I don't know. I don't calculate day by day. We can only do those percentages on genres in our shop on, you know, a longer term basis. You can't look at one day's data and say things are changing. It doesn't work like that. So I, I haven't even seen yesterday's data yet. I just went to bed straight away. So, so I don't know what will happen. I don't know. Evening customers, people who didn't know about heroes and stuff like that. It might be a different proportion of things we're selling here. I really don't know. Also, too, that experience we had last night, it might, you know, maybe it was Saturday night. It was Saturday night in Saxa. And maybe that had something to do with it. Maybe there might have been an awful lot of people out looking for something to do because it's Saturday night, you know. Maybe tonight, Sunday night, will be different. I don't know. I suspect no difference because these were tourists. These were just people. You know, tourists travel seven days a week. They don't you know, just go out on the weekends. We'll see. We'll see. We'll learn how to make this work. But if we don't get more staff, I'm just going to kill myself. There's no way. I, mean, I will end up killing myself. It's just incredible. You know, what did I do? I started yesterday at 6 o'clock, same as today. Had a quick breakfast, did stuff, got the mail, cleaned up the shop here, start streaming at 8. And last night I got out of here at 10. There's no way. I can't, I can't keep that up. So we've got to get more stuff, absolutely. As far as making YouTube videos and stuff, my God, what's going to happen? Japanese natives coming in the store. I'm not sure what you mean. You mean Japanese coming in the store? Japanese natives. Yes, of course. Um, not a whole lot more, except as I said yesterday, it turned out that families with kids became an issue, became a thing. And that's not really something we're going to uh, encourage. <coughs> Japanese natives. Yeah, sorry about the light, Ken. You know, it's just it's on my list of things to do. I'll maybe try and get it done today. I don't know. It's Sunday afternoon here. I don't know. I need it myself desperately, so I'm not procrastinating on this. I'm just simply tied up. I need my light so that the stream just doesn't look attractive this way. I'm sorry. Actually, there's a reason that the light's not here today. I mean, the light I had upstairs in my room on the second floor, why don't I just move that one down? 
we talked about this yesterday. That was a temporary lens. It's sort of a double bulb fixture, which I just stole from somewhere else. And there's one bulb in it and this thing sticking out the side. And I put it there temporarily for a couple of days and then used it for years and years and years. So I'm trying to avoid bringing that one down here just temporarily for a couple of days. I want to get a really nice, perfectly smooth, adjustable light here. So for the moment, I'm doing nothing rather than doing that temporary fix, which will sit here for 10 years. You know. Trying to learn from my mistakes here. Just knowing myself. It's too big that I need to trim, but I can't see it at the moment. I'll have to trim it after test printing. So.
How do we handle parties when people are not skilled enough with their hands to do the printing properly? Oh, it's not a problem. We've, we've built a print party system where anybody with, you know, quote, normal, unquote, normal motor skills, anybody can, you can hold a piece of paper. We've built a system where, where you can get through this, you know. That's the point of our print parties. We, we've built a system where we, we have got it all ready for you. We give you a couple of minutes of training in the basic thing, how to hold the paper, what the motions are going to be, and stuff like that. And then after the couple of minutes of training, we let you go out. We do it first, we're doing it with you. We're the, the kids in the print party are doing it and showing you. And whatever, I don't know what the percentage is, 90, 90x percent, 98 percent, 99 or whatever people get a really, really nice result with their print. You know, it's the system we've built. And I don't really know how to describe it in words. You can see the print parties. There's a couple of YouTube videos now on our channel that show a full print party start to finish. And you can see the concept, how it works, what we do, how we train people at first. And very, very rare that we get someone that can't actually do it, you know. I think I told a story a while ago, you know, a guy came who was a, a reporter, who came with a photographer. He was going to report about the event in his travel magazine. And he brought along a photographer to show how to do it, to, to take pictures while they were doing it, how to do it. And he and I chatted for a while, get the background, sort it out, and then he said, okay, let's go and let's go and do the thing and get the photographer ready. And he came into the print party room and we started getting ready and I picked up the piece of paper and gave him his sheet and showed him how to hold it. And we hold the paper, you know, in our, you know, the camera, we hold the paper with our fingers with the thumb as a guide, you know, each side, it's fingers to hold, thumb as a guide. <coughs> and I start to show him how to do this. He says, Dave, we have a problem here. And he lifts up his hand. He's got no thumb. He chopped it off in a table saw accident years ago or something. So, so he looks at me and I look at him and we're both like, well, that's not going to work. Let's move on to plan B. So, so we moved on to plan B. I mean, the guy was about a crip or anything. You know, whatever. He had no thumb. We just used different fingers to make it work. You know? It's okay. Just, we get it done, you know. We have built a beautiful system that allows pretty much anybody to get a really interesting, nicely made woodblock print. It's the it's a secret sauce that other print companies can't handle. There's a group of people doing it over at Narita Airport. You might some of you might have seen these videos. Over at Narita Airport, the airport authority. Actually, they called me about this. I had an exhibition of prints up there five or six years ago or something. And after it was over, they called me back and said, look, we want to work out an experience where people can make their own woodblock prints. Can your company run this for us? You know? And we weren't, we'd say no, because we just don't have staff. I can't send people out to the airport every day. I mean, it's just, just impossible. It was way over our heads. So we said, no, I'm sorry. Great idea, but we can't handle it for you. So they did it on their own. And they've got an interesting little thing. They've got some wood blocks from somewhere. They've got some workshop to, to make set of wood blocks for them. They've got the great wave out there. I see now people put videos of this. And they've trained some young girls. They would dress them up in fancy little kimonos, and they've trained some young girls to do this. And actually, a bunch of those girls came here to do our print part for a bit of training to see what we're doing and how to do it, and, you know, blah, 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 blah. So if you look at some videos, look up some uh, YouTube videos, people who've been to Narita Airport while they're waiting for their plane, they make their own woodblock print. And it's okay, it's fun, I'm not going to disparage it, whatever, but they use dry paper and the girls running it don't know anything about printmaking. And it's kind of a sloppy mess. And they don't really care, because the idea is just touch Japanese culture, spend 10 minutes talking to a girl in a kimono, whatever, blah, 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 blah. It's a different motivation, different, you know, <coughs> different concept. But with us, because we have the background in printmaking, our goal is different. We want people to have fun playing with it, spend some time chatting with Japanese kids, blah, blah, blah. But we also want them to go out with a beautiful, beautiful print, a print that they've really done nicely. And that's the secret sauce we bring to it. The, the moisture in the paper, we control that really carefully. We show them how to hold the paper. We keep the moisture controlled all the way through. What are you linking to here? Something from my website from a billion years ago. I don't have any idea what you're linking to here.
thumb stumps. What are you talking about? Oh God, that's a long time ago. Wow. What a little boy. Yeah, sometimes people have too many thumbs. You know, sometimes there's people who are just pretty clumsy, I know. It's usually not a problem. Uh, usually what happens is people come in thinking, I am clumsy, I can't do that. And they think that's the case so strongly that, of course, that's the result. They have made that happen themselves. You know, this, of course, happens. You know? I get the same thing. I'm the kind of person who will say, I can't draw. So, of course, because I think that and say that, then it turns out that I can't draw. So, yeah, there are people who, you know, really don't quite get through it very perfectly. Okay, as long as you've got your, your casual, relaxed attitude, it's okay. Every now and then, we get a bit of a problem where somebody is the kind of person we say, you're all thumbs, and they're not so good at manipulating stuff, and yet they really, really, really have a super desire to make a beautiful print that looks like the ones in the shop. So that's where we sometimes get a problem, where the expectations override the physical ability. It never happens with kids because they don't care. They'll just do whatever it is and bang, bang, bang. But sometimes adults think too much. And even though it's the very first woodblock print they have ever made, they have the idea that it should look like the best ones in our shop. And they're disappointed that it doesn't. So whatever. Sometimes people are a bit too serious about it. But that's really not very, very common. For the most part, people approach this in a fairly lighthearted way. And we do it ourselves in an apparently light-hearted way, but actually quite serious way in the background to make a beautiful result, with the most beautiful result we can get. So although you might think we're fooling around and joking quite a bit during the print party and laughing, here we are actually operating very seriously in our approach to making the print itself. So. That's part of the reason, of course, why I got in trouble in my trip advisor in the situation a few weeks ago. Where I wasn't willing to let go enough. <laughs> out there it's nearly nine o'clock what's going to be happening today today it's a triple staff day we're going to have kawaii san and kitamura san and i think it's koizumi san i don't remember exactly who's on day two there's a bunch of print parties but it's going to be a day here and it's our first sunday in the new shop i don't know Something else happening here too, I know I, I don't have a facility to really show you very well this morning, but maybe I can, if I can zoom the camera up. It's in a, because of the extra space in the shop here now, you saw the photographs the other day of the new open shop, and it's not the bare walls here. It's just the first stage of coming in here. We've got the prints in the bins, the hunger cut prints on the wall, and the calendar ready. 
But what we haven't set up yet is the area to display larger prints. We, we've got a quite a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful collection of larger prints. And you saw I put some folders out on the table the other day. There's some folders with larger prints in them. But we really now want to sort of display prints. Have a place where people see, oh, that's what it would look like back home on my wall. So even though we don't sell prints in frames and we don't do framing, some of the larger prints we have, for most people, they're going to be decorative items. They don't have a portfolio that they'll keep them in. The beautiful large print. So what I did last, this morning actually, I didn't have time to do it last night, I thought about it last night. We were chatting with people about this in the crowd last night. So this morning when I got up and had my coffee here, I went to our storeroom here and I brought out a couple of large prints and I put them on the end of the wall here just to see what they might look like. They're not up on the wall in frames yet, they're just standing on the counter. Let's see if I can zoom, zoom around to see this. Hang on a sec. Just a minute here, it's going to get you seasick for a minute, just a moment. There's the, oh, there's the flowers from the uh, antique shop. Hang on a sec. There's the... I better stabilize this. There's part of the browser bins, eh? at the other at the other part of the shop. We've, we've got the browser bins in the front. You can see them, like a record shop where the records are. And then the lights above, we've got a, an angled shelf at the back where people can see the prints under a nice light. I'm going down the shelf, and what I did last night was... Oh, it's too low. Hang on. I took those two prints. Maybe you know what they are, the famous Thunder God and the Wind God. And we've got a pair of them, and they are on gold background. Maybe let me, let me just zoom out a bit. If I go down there, can I do this? If I go down there for a second. Let me show you. I should wait till Kai some bits are happy to do it. bunch of prints like this now, which we really want to try and get exposed to. Spectacular productions, we just haven't had any way to expose them. Beautiful, beautiful larger prints, which are going to just look spectacular in the environment. Earthquake. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oops, way off. Just a sec. Sorry. That's what I get for jerking things around. Where am I? Yeah. I should have waited until I buy something.
I mean, we have tons of prints. We have dozens and dozens and dozens of prints of that sort of genre, but we've never had a place to show them before. So we've built that corner, and I'm not sure how to do it, because we can't make frames for these things, and nobody will buy frames here in Japan to carry home anyway. But we can pack and ship that stuff flat, so we're going to maybe just start displaying these things quite a bit more. The tax tax. The yeah, tax about tax. Yeah, we're, we're, a, we're a tax-free shop, which means, on all. What Japan has is a, there's a tax that's added at, these, at the cash register in most cases. It's called the consumption tax. It's similar to in Europe. You've got a VAT, value added tax. Uh, I think Americans probably don't have that. Some American states have a sales tax, which is added to things at the point of sale. And this is kind of in between those two things. It's a, it's a consumption tax, which goes on items. And it's 8% in Japan right now. And tourists don't have to pay it if the shop is registered, like we are, and if they have their passport. It's the thing in the old days. Remember in the old days you used to do the deal where you paid taxes in shops at the airport, you made a line up to get your tax back and stuff like that. It's the tax that used to be involved there, but you don't line up at the airport anymore. What you do is you just, you don't pay the tax in the shop, so there's nothing to get back at the airport. We're a tax-free shop, so the, the prices in our shop are with no tax on. When you see a print for 7,000 yen, we need your passport, and you pay 7,000 yen. If there's no passport, or if you're a Japanese person, then over at the register, 8% gets added to the price. Those prints I just showed you, the ones with the sort of gold approach and the deluxe approach, they really are super deluxe productions and uh, there's nothing like that being made anymore. And there's a bit of a bizarre circumstance. I know, if you know about Japanese economic history over the past few years, there's a, what they had was called the, the bubble era. It was the late 70s, 1980s and into the early 90s when there was a sort of an asset bubble. Real estate became stunningly overpriced and like one shop in the Ginza became worth more than Central Park in New York or whatever, I don't know the exact numbers, but there was a stunning asset bubble. So all of a sudden a bunch of people who were sitting on land in Tokyo and stuff became bajillionaires. And it sort of sent the country into a bit of a silly frenzy. And there was cash everywhere, there was borrowing, there was, it was just a bizarre bubble. And I was a bit of a beneficiary of it because the year I was just here starting my poet series was just at the end of the book. So there were a bunch of people who were able to subscribe to my series in a sort of mindless way. Oh, that's cheap, I'll buy that, bang, bang, bang. So it helped me uh, some amount in the early years of my subscriptions doing the poets. It hit hard because the bubble crashed about 1990 and for the rest of my poet series I was in a post-bubble situation where people were broke. But the point being that during the 1980s then, anybody who was making stuff like woodblock prints had a real opportunity. And there was two companies, Yu Yu Do and Tan Seisha. They made some spectacular, spectacular prints. They took advantage of this asset bubble, made the, this, this wind god, thunder god. I have no idea how many impressions, 50, 60, 70, 80 impressions, gold leaf, pull out all the stops, order the best paper, just pay the craftsman whatever they want, bang, 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 because they were able to sell them for it. At that time, God knows what price. They would have sold for, I don't know, Juman each, need Juman for the pair, maybe a thousand dollars each or something. I don't know. Perhaps quite a bit more than that. I don't know. I don't have a catalog from the era back there. And now what's happening, of course, is people that bought that in the 1980s, maybe if you were just whatever, if you were a 50 or 60 year old person back in the 1980s buying this, 
This is now 30, 40 years along. A lot of this stuff now is coming out of the market because people have passed away and their kids are cleaning out the house and stuff like this. So there's going to be a bunch of these things coming out here, I think, over the next few years. They start to pop up here and there. And they're not cheap for me, of course. We bought these in the dealer auction, and all the dealers want this, of course, to put it in their shop and display. So this is no super bargain. I wasn't able to buy these at dirt bottom prices and pass it on to you. They are still expensive. But they're nowhere near the prices that were charged for them when they were first made. They just were nowhere near that.
this corner is really, really confusing where all these little pieces of thumb are. Seaweed and tentacles, little tentacles and stuff. There's lots of places here where I'm not cutting the full area. I'm going to wait till I do a test for you before I cut out. Because it's really hard to tell what should be kept and what should be taken out in some places. If you can get a clear view of tentacles, you know what comes out of it. So It's going to be a good crunchy block once we get to the clearing stage. There's going to be lots of nice noise. Not only is it you who can't see, I can't see either. The light's so bad here this morning. So. There's our new sign, uh, sound. There's. Oh, I sound. Oh, hello, good morning, good morning. 
Are you ready for a big day? He's outside, so. He puts the flag up. That's become the first part of our daily routine. We're going part way up the steps to get the poster. What we've got is a new poster that sits on the outside of the door that used to go upstairs. We've already found a couple of people heading upstairs in one of Scotland, so we put a poster on that door with an arrow that points them to this direction. So the flag goes out in the street onto a stand, and there's a poster on the old door. And I said, if he's gone upstairs, he's going to put his bags and stuff in the old party room, which has become sort of a quasi-staff room. That's where people eat lunch and stuff. Because that's the new routine for the staff people. They go up there, dump their bags. In winter, whatever, they get changed, get their coats off, stuff like that. That's too working to say. Oh, Kojimi san, oh, I'm a kawaii san, the way there. Bag of mokte, the way there. Oh, Kojimi san, the What's the question? Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. Even now, the stream, the dan dan, the world is getting like ping pong, ping pong, ping pong, kawaii san ga hara no yori shite. Even the sound is different. The shuttle is bang. Ah, that's right. New sound. That's right. 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 That's お、かいさん、おはようとかいろいろ。ごめん。ごめん。はい、小泉さん。はい、小泉さん。はい。はい。ベースボールキング。What's the What's the shirt today? Phillies. I haven't seen that one before. What's the stadium called there? Citizen Bank Park. Citizen. Citizen Bank Park. Bank. Yes. Is that still the name? Yes. I don't know if you've seen Koizumi San, a relatively new staff member. He has a collection of Major League Baseball uh, stadium shirts. Or, well, they're team shirts. Where do you even get them? You get stadium shirts with the name of the stadium. And he's been around. He's been around, all, I think, all of them, where he's collecting them, whatever. And each day he wears new one. I don't know. Have you got the whole set? Uh, no. How many are you missing? Just four. Missing. So what's your plan? You going over there next year? Maybe. <laughs> Which four are missing? Uh, San Francisco. San Francisco Giants. Uh, yes. What's the stadium? Giants. What's the stadium called? Giant uh, Stadium, is yes. it? <laughs> Candlestick Park. No. Is that what it's called? The San Francisco uh, Stadium? AT and T Park. Oh, they changed the name. Is yes. that, did it used to be called Candlestick Park, or am I confusing? Uh, change. Change. Okay. Yes. AT and T Park. Uh, what else are you missing? <laughs> you can't remember. Uh, Angels Park, Angels Stadium. That's where. That's Los Angeles. Yes, uh, California, and <laughs> uh, okay, no problem. You can. <laughs> he, he said he's got four missing. Yeah, four missing. Yes, yeah. so, so. Atlanta. 
Atlanta. What's Atlanta. the stadium there? I have no idea. The stream is telling us anyway. They just. Uh, yeah, there's questions for you. There's questions for you. Come on. <laughs> okay, candlestick. I was wrong. Okay, it used to be candlestick. AT and T is yeah. the new stadium. Okay, that's yeah. good. Okay, here we are. Then it's a. Do, oh, yeah. I, do you have an Anaheim Angels Otani shirt? No. No, because that's too new for him. He was over there. I don't like Japanese. So, so he's not interested in the Japanese style. He's in. He's into the the you know, regular American. Yeah. Yeah. Trout. So we've got the light is really bad because yeah. <laughs> the door light shining through. So Absolutely. then angels, whatever. Ted Turner Stadium, is that what it's called for the Braves? Yeah. Atlanta Braves. And Santos Park. Okay, okay. Brand new park. Okay. There's one more. What are you and missing? Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay. Yes, Miami. The, what is it? The team is Tampa Bay Rays. Is that the team name? I forgot. Uh, I forgot the name. <laughs> What's the state of <laughs> so, These guys know, of course. So, so, so. You're not really professional then. Come on, come on, come on. You're supposed to have all this at your fingertips. Thank you. His uh, Phillies t shirt here, it's uh, number 20, Mike yeah. Schmidt. Is that the number yeah, one? Yeah. Mike Schmidt. Okay. Is he still there or is he retired? No, it's. From when yes, you were over there? It's classic. Classic, okay. Yes, okay, okay, okay. okay. It's Tropicana State. Yeah, Tropicana <laughs> <Kansas. laughs> He's got a problem though. He wants another vacation to get over there to America and visit the stadiums he's missing. And we're like, busy. <laughs> so we'll work it out. Mike Schmidt, Hall of Famer. Just a classic shirt yeah, for this yeah. one. Yeah, okay. okay. Is he still alive or is that really old? Yes. Yeah. I love it. Anyway, gang, I got to get out of here. We are getting ready now for a Sunday, our first Sunday in the South Side. It's, we expect it. It's going to be crazy. Time lapse of a shop over there. It is actually something we're thinking. And I'll tell you what I'm thinking right now. We talked about this before. The camera right now is on a tripod. It looks down. And as I mentioned yesterday, what I'm planning on doing, we're going to put, we're going to put shelves for me into the wall here so I can use them as storage and, and cubicles. And then when I do that, I'm going to put the camera here on one of those, I don't know what it's called, you know, an extendable arm that reaches in and out. So at the moment, what I have to do is to, to make room in the shop, I've got to take the camera away after I finish streaming and pack it up and take it out of the way. But if the camera is right here on an extendable arm, right in this place, we can easily slide it up. It shoots down over the whole length of the shop. And we could do, we could just stream the shop one day for fun or just record the thing and do a time lapse of the people coming in and coming out. So yes, somebody's asking about time lapse. It is one of the things that's in the back of my mind here to do. But as with many things that we talk about, there's just a lot of priorities in front of them. Okay, today's Sunday. I'll be back here tomorrow morning, same time, same station, probably doing the same job. I hope to try and get the light a little bit better sorted out, but no guarantees on that, please. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to The Rambling. See you tomorrow at the same time, same station. Bye-bye for now. Thank you. Are you guys ready for this? Sunday day in Asakusa. I got to tell you what happened last night. It was insane. Yeah. Insane. Insane. So, yes. Cash. Let me shut the screen first. Okay. Bye-bye, guys. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye-bye.